Hey friends, this is a video about a controversial and unpleasant topic which I fear is going to get demonetized or even blocked by YouTube. So I'm going to preface it by saying I'm going to use a euphemism. <sighs> it's about bad people who serially unalive lots of other people and I'm going to refer to them as SKs. You're smart people, you can figure it out. You're smarter than YouTube anyway. So I was sent an article about a juicy and popular topic, the psychology of SKs, and at first I thought my usual audience wouldn't be particularly interested in this subject. But as I read on, yikes, it's about evolutionary psychology. Longtime viewers might know that I really, really, really detest Evo Psych. And this particular article pushes all of my buttons hard. So now, of course, I've got to talk about it. First, allow me to explain that I have no problem at all with the disciplines of psychology and sociology, and I think they could have valuable things to say about SKs, a topic which is also of genuine concern to modern society as a whole. So please do study and analyze the behavior of psychopaths, as unpleasant as it is. You go, psychologist. You can tell us something about what leads people to such destructive behaviors and maybe reduce the likelihood of that particular event happening. This study is not particularly helpful. It's titled Sex Differences in SKs, and okay, that's a good start. From what little I know of these crimes, sure enough, I'm aware of sex differences there. Uh, many more men than women are serial killers, SKs, excuse me. And from lurid pop culture stories, I have the impression that males, MSKs for short, are more violent and bloody, while FSKs are more likely to use poison, for instance. That's a real difference, it seems, so well worth analyzing. We should first look to see whether my impressions are at all accurate, of course. And the paper confirms that they are. So this is a table of data gleaned from reports of 110 killers. And there is some real information here. Even if it is rather horrifying, uh, there are genuine statistical differences between MSKs and FSKs. Men tend to go after strangers. Women hurt familiar acquaintances. Men favor more violent direct attacks. Women do, women do use poisons more often, but asphyxiation is popular with both sexes. It's a grimly fascinating table. It is also the entirety of the data presented. Most of the paper is about statistical analyses and speculation about the numbers you see here. If you're like me, you probably wonder about the causes of these differences. I would guess that physical differences are significant. Men are generally larger than women, making it more difficult for FSKs to succeed in face-to-face -face confrontations with, with a man. There are significant cultural differences as well between men and women. Most women are brought up to be more passive and obedient to the whims of the patriarchy. And I'd expect psychologists to dig deeper into that, the motivations and reasoning behind their acts. Hint, these psychologists don't. There is a pattern here. It's going to take more than just tabulating data to get to the root of the problem. So I was gobsmacked to read a summary of the study in which one of the authors jumped immediately to a ridiculous assumption. While there is considerable public interest in SKs, Harrison said there has been little research on these. Really? Uh, possibly because SKs are relatively rare. But while working on a previous study, Harrison started to notice a difference between male and female SK patterns that she was interested in exploring. Harrison said that because humans lived as hunter-gatherers for about 95% of their history, these ancient roles could help explain these differences. 
Historically, men hunted animals as prey, and women gathered nearby resources like grains and plants. I'm, I'm kind of, this is dubious, so okay. Anyway, Harrison said, as an evolutionary psychologist, I wondered if something left over from these old roles could be affecting how male and female SKs choose their victims. Whoa, they're comparing MSKs to hunters, FSKs to gatherers, as if their crimes are somehow similar to hunting meat or collecting berries? Are SKs usually eating their victims? The table doesn't even mention cannibalism. Okay, I thought, maybe this is just sensationalist hyperbole said in a press release, but surely the source article would be more sober and considerate of the actual ev evidence. Nope. It jumps directly to the idea that the reasons for the differences can be found in evolution. In the present article, we put forth the argument that MSKs are theoretical hunters of victims and FSKs are theoretical gatherers of victims. That is, MSKs more frequently kill strangers. They stalk, traveling distances to hunt and kill. In contrast, FSKs more frequently kill those around them, figuratively gathering victims who are familiar to them, staying in one place to kill. These differences may stem from sex-specific tendencies derived from labor divisions in the ancestral environment, whereby men hunted animals as prey and women gathered nearby grains and plants for food. Ugh, evolutionary psychology. You don't need evolution to explain modern behaviors in this sense. While I might agree that in the evolution of humans, women have been constrained by the impositions of pregnancy. Oh, sorry, I, I got a, I've got a cat running around in here. I usually don't let him in here, but my wife is away for a week, and so I'm trying to be nice and let the cat spend time with me. It may be a terrible mistake. Okay, cat, are you calming down? Okay, well, I might agree that in the evolution of humans, women have been constrained by the impositions of pregnancy, a biological factor, and child care, a cultural factor, which limit mobility and leave men to be the wide-ranging hunters, that this difference is at all useful in explaining the behavior of pathological individu indivi individuals is a huge stretch. It's also entirely superfluous, explaining nothing. I have several objections. One, there is no reason to assume that damaged pathological individuals are at all representative of the processes that are operated in normal, healthy societies, modern or ancient. The extrapolation from ancient hunter-gatherer communities is unwarranted. Two, for this to be an evolved trait, it would have to be heritable. Are there pedigrees of SKs that show the existence of whole lineages of these individuals? Three, is there any adapted significance to the method of execution used by SKs? Why should we consider evolutionary psychology, a pan-adaptationist program, to offer anything in the explanation of these behaviors? Four, I think the authors would not argue that SK is in itself a heritable property, but that the mode of expression is a consequence of sex differences. But then, why is SK a useful property to study at all, especially study the biology of this behavior, when the pattern of sex differences is already observable? Five, the most damning indictment of this study is that it is drawn exclusively from news accounts of SKs in the United States of America between 1856 and 2009. So, not only are they looking at extreme behaviors from fringe individuals, but they are basing it entirely on one oddball culture and they're drawing conclusions from indirect biased sources. And then they make a great leap to suggest that this tells us something about human societies 100,000 years ago in Africa. But perhaps even more irritating to me are the conclusions they draw from their weak, flawed information. Harrison said she hopes that in addition to helping investigators solve crimes, 
The results can help create prevention and treatment programs for violent offenders. How? Please explain how positing an evolutionary basis for why a man bludgeoned someone to death, for instance, rather than suffocating them with a pillow, is at all useful in prevention and treatment. How does it help solve crimes? Everyone is a product of evolution, so this is about as useful as declaring that we have discovered that all criminals are biological. I hope this helps the police solve some crimes. In the paper, they say, to augment efforts at understanding and preventing these crimes, future researchers and law enforcement officials may wish to keep this in mind. Keep what in mind? That sex differences exist? That human behavior is the product of evolution? They also claim to have interpreted the data utilizing evolutionary theory. Uh, shocking news. I know what evolutionary theory looks like. And there is no evolutionary theory anywhere in the paper. The closest they come is to make assumptions that unusual behavior in a single culture in a single century is representative of the deep history of our species and then declare that their assumptions confirm their perspective on evolution. There is no comparative work. There's no deeper analysis of mechanisms. They are only appropriating the credibility of evolutionary biology as a label to make the work seem more sciencey. Honestly, evolutionary psychologists, just drop the abused term evolutionary from your discipline. There's good and valuable information to be gathered from the study of the psychology and sociology of crime, but it's going to require a better explanation than evolution done did it. Okay, grump over. I do have a distaste for evolutionary psychology, and I admit it. Look at it this way. I could be gushing over spiders today instead of dissecting a bad paper. So it could be worse. Or better. Spring has finally arrived and the spiders are flourishing. I've been finding diverse spiders everywhere. And the colony in my compost bin is thriving uh, as everything thaws out. So I could do another video about the creepy crawlies in my com compost pile. Wouldn't that be nice? If you disagree, you have to leave a comment to let me know. If you agree, you should leave a comment to let me know that you think I should do that. Or you subscribers could say something on my Patreon page. I'll, I'll definitely pay attention to what you say. Or, you know, there's that like and subscribe button you could click on if you don't want to talk to me. Now I have to go outside and look for arachnids. Bye, maybe? Cat, what are you doing? Let's see if the cat is available. There we go. All right, when I don't want her, to, I want her to calm down. She's everywhere making noise. And when I do want to bring her on to show, her, show off our cat, then she gets all camera shy and runs away. So here she is. Say hello, kitty. Nope. That's her usual response. Okay, bye.